Glad you're back with us. This is Zach Rosette with BuildBox, and I'd like to welcome you to the final video in this series, part 10 of the Make Your Own Game series. In part nine, we learned about where our advertising keys go and some final settings we need in place before exporting to different platforms. In part 10, I'm going to give you some tips, tricks, and hacks, and we're going to look at making precise collision shapes. I'll show you how to do the exploding death hack. I'll let you in on a secret tip about making secret worlds unrepeatable. I'll teach you the timer trick, and I'll have some final thoughts for you to close out the series. So a lot of next level stuff for you. So let's just dive right in. So the first thing I'll say is thank you to the community members who have come up with some of these brilliant ideas. If you want to learn this software, I mean really learn this software, you got to join the BuildBox community and be active in the forum and Discord. There you will find a wealth of information to search through. New information and conversation happens every day. We have a lot of very helpful people who want to see you do well, so join us in there. It's also a lot of fun. The first trick isn't as complex as the others, so let's start with that one. Let's talk about precise collision shapes for our mountain enemies. Way back in part two, when we went over collision shapes, we knew we weren't being exact with our shapes, and I mentioned making a composite object was our solution. So let me show you how to do that. Let's get a blank scene ready, and let's drag in different parts of our mountains. Our artist supplied us with our mountain enemies, but broken down into its components. So let's drag those in, one at a time, and get their collision shapes exact, keeping in mind our forgiving collision shape philosophy. And we can bring in our enemy mountain as it is, and let's get our new shapes to mimic our artist's original rendition. That's pretty close, and you get the idea. Anyway, let's turn on debug mode and see the difference here. Now here's the really cool part. You can see the advantage here because now we can start to rotate them in new ways, even scaling them differently. And this gives us control over not only better collision shapes, but now we have full control over placement, scaling, and rotation of each individual spike. So keep precise collision shapes in mind when designing your graphic assets. Okay, now let's give our character an exploding death so he looks like he shatters into tiny little versions of himself. So just go into any world and drag in an image of our character onto the object option of the drag and drop wheel. Let's select it in the asset panel and name it Shatter, and then delete it out of our scene. Let's select our character in the asset panel and delete the defeated animation. And now let's edit the defeated animation. We're going to pull our shatter object into position 0, 0, and we're going to scale it down to like 0.15 or so. Let's set it to be a physics object and give it some movement with 500 and the velocity randomizers. Let's give it a spawner component with a very large spawner rate like 999 or something. Let's duplicate this object in some different directions. We could even pull in another image for our placement guide if we wanted to. Delete that image when we're done, and let's do some dyeing. Now you could go crazy with this, making way more than needed, but keep in mind it has to be able to run on a device, so you make sure to test it on a device. Spawning a billion physics objects may give your iPhone a heart attack, so you might want to balance your animation humor with playability. Okay, remember those extra worlds we have in the game's mind map? Why don't we put those to good use by creating a secret world for our player to discover? Let's create a world that has a lot of bumpers for fun and coins to grab for the coin shop. One that has so many coins to grab, in fact, that we don't want the player to be able to play through it more than once and exploit grabbing those coins. So let's create a secret world that, once discovered and played through, can never be played through again. To start, I've cooked up a world with a huge coin grab for our player. Just coins and some bumpers for fun. So what we need to do is create a menu jump in our hard mode world. Let's choose a scene and we'll copy our path marker. But you could use anything, a graphic or another particle emitter, it doesn't matter. Let's go to the asset panel and grab a menu jump from the logic pieces. 
Let's place that menu jump with our marker and label it coin grab. We will leave the rest of the settings as is, but if we wanted to use this as a world complete goal, we could pause gameplay while the menu is loaded, because what menu jump does is allow us to connect one node to another node. Okay, let's go back into the mind map and see our connection in our hard mode world, and let's go ahead and grab and connect the hard mode node to the coin grab node. Now here's the trick. We want to be able to play that coin grab, but we need it to have its own world UI so we can tweak it just a bit. So let's duplicate the world UI that we're using currently and connect the coin grab to that UI instead of the original. Let's change the game over observer to read 50 coins, making sure it is set to session. Session means the current gameplay session. So you could set this to 5000 or whatever number fits your game or you could make this world a certain length and let them play through the whole thing. It's all up to you, but for demo purposes, 50 coins will work well. Let's drag a new event observer into it and set it to second play. This was actually originally designed for tutorial menus and tutorial worlds. The first time you play a game, the tutorials will appear and teach the player how to play your game. But when they come back for a second time, the tutorials will be skipped. So very handy, but we are going to use it to make sure the world can never be played again using those same mechanics. So let's name the event observer played and go back into the mind map and connect it back to the hard mode node. Let's test this out. In our secret world, we have our 50 coins, but we want to go back. Access denied. So you can see it shows the world for just a moment while the observer is routing us back. Let me show you how to hide that. Let's double click on our coin grab UI and drag in an image of just a tiny black square. Let's resize this to cover the entire UI, making sure it's at the top of the outliner. Set it to auto hide at 0.1 seconds, and let's have a look at what we got here. We have our 50, but now it doesn't show the coin grab world when we want to go back. So you could even just give that fade and look on every node chain, which would probably look neat, so two tips in one here. The coin grab only played once and never played again. Pretty neat. Okay, let's look at our final tip, trick, and hack. The timer trick. Let's say when players went into that secret coin grab world that we only wanted them to get about 10 seconds to grab as many coins as they can. I'll show you how to do that. Let's go up into the mind map and get into our original world node. We're going to create an action. Just grab any old graphic, it's never going to be seen in the game, so just drag anything into the action option on the drag and drop wheel. We're going to rename it Timer. We're going to set the coin to zero and points to one, not showing either. And now let's delete the default animation of the action by clicking on the X to delete it. Let's create an object. Could be the same graphic if you want, and let's delete the default animation of the object and name it Timer Object. Select the action in the scene and cut it to the clipboard with either Control X or Command X. Let's select the Timer Object in the Asset panel and edit the default animation we deleted, clicking in the Animation Editor so it has focus. Let's paste our invisible action in with Control V or Command V, making sure we set its position to 0, 0. Let's close this and select our character and edit its default animation. We'll drag in our timer object in at position 0, 0 and make sure it is set to decoration. We will give it a high speed negative Y axis takeoff so it leaves the scene and gets deleted in the delete threshold once it's spawned.
Let's go into our coin grab UI and duplicate our coins label and make it read timer. We will duplicate the coin counter and adjust it to keep score of the current world with our score type being points and the amount set to current. Then let's change our event observer to keep track of the session points with a total of 10. So now when we play hard mode and get into our coin grab, after 10 seconds, we get kicked back to hard mode because we've reached 10 seconds and the time is up. And in fact, our time together is up as well. I've had a lot of fun bringing you the Make Your Own Game series, and it really was a team effort behind the scenes. I had direct access to the whole App On Board team, so a big thank you goes out to all of those involved. And I also want to give a very special thank you to the original creator of this series, Heath Close, who created a fantastic series that could be updated along with the software. My sincere hope is that the series will arm you with enough information to find success making games with BuildBox. I really do. So thank you for joining us throughout the series. I will see you in the next one, and good luck.